For better or for worse, drones are everywhere. It seems like every few weeks a new one comes out loaded with an array of shiny new tech and features, and social media is flooded with incredible drone footage. All of which makes sense. Drones have allowed smaller productions to capture incredible footage and tell their stories in a unique way. If you're a growing filmmaker, getting into drone footage is kind of inevitable. It's irresistible. Drones have been a big part of my work, so today I want to share with you the best techniques I've picked up along the way for capturing great aerial footage. Ironically, I've come out to film the drone video, and it is a definitive no drone day. <laughs> God, it's beautiful though. Look at this. There is going to be some background noise in this, but it's like rain falling and birds, so I think it's nice. Let's start by talking about gear. First, the drone itself, choosing the right drone. It feels like every day a new drone comes out with a bunch of new features that you need to get good footage and all the other ones become obsolete, but if you have a flying camera, you're already 90% of the way there. The production value you get from that is insane. Those new features can be great for getting unique shots, but don't feel like your drone from a few years ago is obsolete. Use what you have and you will get great footage. For the past couple years since it came out, I've been using the DJI Air 2S. It's one of the cheaper, lesser featured drones, but it's been great. No complaints. One accessory that can be really helpful for getting better drone footage is some ND filters for your drone. Now, if you're shooting around sunrise or sunset, these can be kind of dicey because the light is changing quickly and you can't adjust the exposure without bringing the drone down and switching the filter, which can cost you a lot of footage. But if you're shooting during the day when the light is consistent and too bright where you have to crank your shutter, NDs will help you get way better footage. Especially if the drone is moving quickly, if you're flying really fast or flying close to the subject. Using NDs will just help you to make sure you have realistic motion blur in your shots, as well as preventing flicker from the sun hitting the lens. Also, make sure to bring some extra batteries because these drone batteries only last like 20 to 30 minutes. So bring a few extras so you can make sure to get enough footage as well as extra propellers just in case you crash your drone, chip a propeller, Something like that. All right, all done with gear, but we can't go out and shoot quite yet because we have to do a bit of preparation to make sure we're gonna be good to go. Starting with checking air maps to make sure that you're allowed to fly a drone where you're going. There are a ton of places where you just can't fly a drone, like all national parks, a lot of wilderness areas, airport zones. Here in North Carolina, there are certain times of year where a lot of places have extra drone restrictions because of peregrine falcons nesting. DJI has a helpful map in the app that shows you restricted areas where you won't even be able to take off, like airport zones. But for places like national parks, wilderness areas, you're gonna have to dig a bit deeper, do your research, and be prepared. Also, check the weather. The light and weather conditions drastically change how your footage will look and how the landscape appears from the sky, but weather can also decide if you get to fly a drone at all. If it's raining, that's pretty much a complete no-go. If it's very foggy like it is today, then that could be a complete no-go. You're gonna be very restricted. You have to stay close to your subject. And if it's snowing, then you can probably get some cool footage but you're not gonna be able to see that big landscape. And finally, when you arrive to your location, just know when it's appropriate to fly a drone. Like if you're at an overlook and there's a lot of other people there, it's sunrise, it's perfectly quiet, you probably shouldn't disturb that for everyone else by throwing up a drone. Maybe go further away, find a spot to yourself out of earshot, or just cut your losses and don't fly a drone at all. Same thing goes for wildlife or people's homes. Drones can be loud and annoying, so just be considerate. All right, now the fun part. We've done all the preparation and we can turn everything on, take off, and talk about some techniques for getting great footage from the sky. Let's start by going over some basic types of shots that you can get with a drone. The first and most simple is just a static hovering shot. You're not moving the camera at all basically just using your drone as a really tall tripod. This is not the most exciting shot you can get with a drone, but it doesn't call much attention to itself and is really helpful for getting angles that you can't get from the ground. There's also a simple push or pull, straight forward or backward, which is a really nice way to show off an epic subject, like, hey, look at this big mountain, or a basic rise or fall, kind of mimicking a crane shot. This is a cinematic classic. You see it in a ton of movies 
and it's just a nice way to show vertical scale. You can also track to the left or the right, which can be a really cool way to follow a moving subject, very dynamic. Or if you pan a little bit while you're doing that, you'll end up with an orbit shot where the camera circles around the subject. Really nice way to place the subject in this big landscape. It's kind of like the Michael Bay shot. You've also got the top-down shot, which is a really fun way to show like the texture or geometry of the scene and more indulgent kinds of shots, like the really close flyby shot, the Mission Impossible shot, which adds just a bunch of energy to your footage. I talk about all these different shot types because it's important to get a variety of footage. When you're up in the sky shooting a beautiful landscape, it's easy to kind of choke and just get very similar shots over and over again. Get some of those, like get a few in the bag, but once you have enough, turn your attention elsewhere and start looking for some smaller details within the scene. Most of the time, I would also recommend keeping the motion fairly simple. A really close flyby or like that Michael Bay orbit shot or an FPV shot can be really cool, but it's not always helpful and can even be distracting. And most of the time in the grand scheme of things, in the context of an entire film, it's best to stick with shots that don't call too much attention to themselves, that don't steal the show. In that same vein, don't always go as high as you possibly can. It's easy to send the drone straight all the way up and capture the biggest possible shot of the entire landscape, but a lot of the time, a shot lower down, closer to the scene, can actually be a lot more interesting. It can include foreground, have a more dynamic motion, and will feel like the camera is moving through the scene rather than moving over the scene. And then a third variation of that same tip, don't always go as fast as possible. Like it's really tempting to just put the pedal to the metal and fly quickly through the scene, but slow down sometimes and let the audience take in what they're looking at. In a lot of cases, that intense, fast speeding shot will feel completely out of place and will take the viewer out of the edit. So get that shot too, but don't only get that shot. You can make getting these slow, smooth shots a lot easier by going into the drone settings and turning down the sensitivity on the controller joysticks. The default sensitivity on the drone controllers can make it really hard to get like a really slow, smooth tilt up. You can make that a lot easier by just turning it down. That way you can push the throttle all the way up and it'll still go nice and slowly. No matter what you're shooting, remember that everything you know about composition and lighting still applies when you're shooting with a drone. With this really short battery life, there's kind of an urge to work really quickly, kind of rolling continuously and getting every shot that first jumps out at you. But slow down a bit. Find those interesting pockets of light and shadow in the scene and fine tune your composition to arrange the different elements in the scene interestingly. It's actually a lot easier to work with light and composition on a drone because you can put the camera wherever you want really easily. This is another good reason to carry extra batteries. It's a lot easier to fine tune your lighting and composition and really craft beautiful images when you have an hour and a half to shoot rather than 25 minutes to shoot. And finally, try not to overindulge. Like know when to bring it back down and get other types of footage with other non-flying cameras. Aerial footage is beautiful, but an entire video made of drone shots will quickly become boring for the audience. It's important to have other types of footage too. Aerial footage should be a complement to your film, not the backbone of it. All right, so now we have a bunch of beautiful drone footage, but we're not done quite yet because there are a couple techniques I use in editing to fit drone footage into my projects that I wanna tell you about. Starting off with coloring your drone footage to match your other footage. I find that drone footage usually doesn't quite match all of my other footage, like it feels a bit crispier and more clinical. So I take some steps in the grading to make sure to carefully match it to my other footage that usually includes adjusting the white balance to get rid of some of the kind of digital purplish tones that you can get with these drone cameras, as well as even adding some effects to soften that footage, like halation and bloom in the highlights, and even a bit of softening a lot of the time. A lot of the time, I'll also animate a bit of camera motion in post, shooting a very basic, like straight push or pull shot in camera, and then adding a very subtle tilt up in the edit. But you can also go a bit harder, like animating the rotation or adding camera shake. And finally, maybe the most important tip in this entire video, is to understand the context of drone footage. Know when it makes sense to use it to further your story, 
rather than just to indulge in a type of shot that looks really cool. Maybe you're using it to get a shot that you can't get from the ground. Maybe you're using it for a creative technique to show the vastness of the landscape or the geometry of the scene from above. Placing a tiny subject in the context of a massive environment or using it to move the camera through the scene really quickly. The list goes on. Using aerial footage to show the unique geology of Iceland's landscape, or how the eruption of Mount St. Helens altered the area around it, or how tall California's redwood trees are. Those situations, when drone footage isn't just a pretty garnish, but a tool for telling the story more effectively. Those situations are the ones where I'm really glad to have a drone in my camera bag. Alright, that's all I have for you today, and I am now thoroughly soggy, so I'm going to get out of here. But I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new from it. If you did, be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV for thousands of other videos like this one, as well as checking out the other videos in this series. We have a bunch of other videos from composition to lighting to outdoor camera gear was the most recent one. You'll learn something. Check them out. Get out there, get some great drone footage, stay dry, have fun. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.